I'm Peter Wesseling, neuropathologist, and I'm honored to be invited to give a talk here. You already heard the title of my talk, and these are my affiliations. I have to say Oxford Nanopore Technology products are for research use only and are not approved to diagnose any disease or condition, but at the same time, we are assessing the potential future clinical application in a clinical setting. Personally, I don't have anything to disclose but teamwork, and this is the team uh, behind the work I'm going to present today. CNS tumor classification, a few words on that. It's very, very clear that nowadays neuro-oncological pathology is about combination of microscopy and molecular information, the m, &M approach, you could say. Already in 2016, a part of the definitions in the classification were based on genetic or molecular features, and many more tumors are now defined based on their genetic features in the 2021 classification, so it's really necessary to perform molecular diagnostics. Some drawbacks are it's time-consuming, often, and expensive. But before you know it, you're penny-wise and pound-foolish in that respect, because you can deal with a patient much better when you know precisely what the kind of tumor is. Here is an overview of the armamentarium we have as neuropathologists for diagnosing CNS tumors, and a new star is methylome profiling, so far mainly uh, applied by using the Illumina platforms. In 2018, a Nature paper was published, a paper was published in Nature on this platform, and it brought a kind of revolutionary change in how we deal with classification of CNS tumors. As you probably know, uh, more than 450,000 at that time, and now more than 900,000 probes uh, are used to assign a particular methylation fingerprint to a tumor. And it helps to make a diagnosis even without looking through the microscope. Most of the time, this methylome profiling analysis is on target. Now about the work I'm going to present here, using nanopore sequencing. What's new, you could say, because there have already been publications before. As you can see here, what's new is that it is ultra-fast and deep-learned, what our group uh, was working on. Ultra-fast, uh, you know nanopore uh, method, I assume, and uh, one of the nice things about nanopore sequencing is that it provides you real-time information also on presence or absence of a methyl group on the C nucleotide. The aim of our work that was recently published in Nature was to exploit the potential for intraoperative molecular CNS tumor diagnosis. Uh, we developed the Sturgeon method. Sturgeon is a kind of a joke because it's a combination of sur surgeon and tea, and we know that in nanopore community, fish names are given to particular uh, algorithms. Uh, Sturgeon leverages the Illumina 450K information that's publicly available and results of those experiments were trained and were used to train and validate classifier models. Now I'm, as I was introduced, a clinical neuropathologist, so I'm not a bioinformatician and I'm not a computational biologist, and when you have any questions about that part of the story, I'm afraid I have to refer to other colleagues in the team, but I know some of it. Here you see what's been published in the Nature paper, schematic representation of the stimulation, cross-validation approach, and results on the simulated data. Uh, and then we applied that approach to uh, archival samples, snap frozen archival samples, and prospectively on fresh tumor samples. With regard to the latter part, most of the time, the approach was correct. It hit the nail on the head with regard to the diagnosis. 
Sometimes there was, it was a little bit off, wrong subclass within a tumor type, and sometimes there was an inconclusive result, but most of the time that could be very well explained by low tumor cell percentage and that kind of stuff. So the Sturgeon models are portable, work across patients and sequence depth, require less than a minute of computation on a laptop CPU. And here is a clinical example. I just heard in the introduction that patients are what we are doing it for. This is a real life patient operated upon in Amsterdam, very small hyperintense lesion in the brain. A needle biopsy was performed because uh, it was not clear what it was, but it when it would be a low-grade diffuse glioma, the idea was that supramarginal resection would be the best treatment. So we performed intraoperative analysis, morphologically and by nanopore sequencing. Morphology was not clear-cut. Difficult to exclude diffuse glioma, but it was not clear. And here you see the procedure in action the neurosurgeon and the first author of the Nature paper and the neuropathologist. And the verdict of the nanopore sequencing was astrocytoma IDH mutant with a very high score. So based on that, the neurosurgeon proceeded with performing the supramarginal resection, hopefully helping the patient to uh, have a much longer progression-free survival and who knows, even cure, but uh, we still have to wait and see. Fortunately, the additional material that was sent in, submitted, indeed showed this diagnosis. So intraoperative nanopore sequencing analysis can assist in neurosurgical decision making, opens avenues for starting tumor-specific therapy already during operation, has the potential to reduce costs, and can drastically speed up the multidisciplinary decision making process. Codes are available uh, via these sites, as are mentioned here. We have plans for the near and more distant future. For instance, the classifier is further improved by collaboration with, for instance, Kendall Dapp and Ziad Abdullayev from uh, Bethesda NIH. We are performing a retrospective study in the Amsterdam University Medical Centers figuring out what the strength and weaknesses of the nanopore approach exactly are. We are performing a prospective study in the Princess Maxima Center in Utrecht, trying to identify the exact benefit of intraoperative analysis for changing neurosurgical strategy and replacing other diagnostic tools. And we are in the process of preservative testing because one of the downsides of the nanopore sequencing is uh, that it can be applied to fresh and snap frozen tissue, but using FFPE, formalin fixed paraffin embedded material, is, well, very, very challenging. So using a cytology medium like thin prep already helps. You see another image showing that. Quality of the DNA is still good enough after two weeks in the cytology medium. There is a very recent paper uh, available via Met Archive from Philip Oiskirchen, one of the uh, frontier runners in this nanopore sequencing uh, activity on CNS tumors, focused on CNS tumors. You can check this one on Met Archive. Anyway, there's a lot of potential in nanopore sequencing for diagnosis of CNS tumors, even intraoperatively. This is what I would like to share with you. Thank you for your attention, and I'm open to take some questions, but not on the neural network part. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs>